So we're getting a little further along into this. We have more practice now. And you see it doesn't list the transformations that you have to do. It doesn't show you the parent function, f of x. It just drops this transformed equation in front of you and says draw it. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I've put two examples of this problem up here. And the reason for that is because it rotates among a number of different graphs. And I just want to um, maybe hit two instead of one. Uh, it's the same idea in both, though. So once, once you understand it for the first one, you can skip the rest of it unless you want some more practice. So let's start off uh, the same way we always do. Let's translate this equation into a list of transformations. And I see here that there is going to be a vertical stretch by 2. Okay, where's that coming from? We see that right here. Okay, what else do we have? Um, there's no more stretches. Uh, there's no compressions because it was a stretch. And let's see, what else do we have? We have some shifts. Okay, there's a shift right there. That is a horizontal shift. And which direction are we going in when we add? Okay, that is left. Hor horizontal shift left by 1. And let's pull up one more here. That right there is a vertical shift down because it's negative, down by 4. Remember, anything inside the parentheses, like what I had in blue, anything inside the parentheses is a horizontal transformation. Anything outside the parentheses is a vertical transformation. Although it's easier to know which parentheses I'm talking about when we're using function notation. Now, um, we just uh, go ahead and pick some points and start transforming it. Uh, we don't see the parent function here, but hopefully everyone knows what the parent function is, right? It's, uh, of course, I can't draw this thing. Let's see, it's going to go there and right here. So it's the parabola, and it looks something like this. Okay, uh, there, that's pretty good. So I'm going to pick two points, and once I have transformed two points, the graph will fill in the rest for me. So there's a point I'm going to use. And you know what, let's just use uh, 1 comma 1 also. That's a fine point. And now we will just make the transformations happen. I like starting off with this one first, 0 comma 0. It's the best point, because if you multiply anything by it, nothing happens. It's easy. So first you stretch the 0 comma 0 point. Nothing happens. Then you shift it left by 1. OK, here we go. Then you shift it down by 4. There we go. OK, that's our new location of the vertex of a parabola. And now we take that 1 comma 1 point. We're going to stretch it by 2. That moves it up here. It doubles the y value. Then left by 1, and then down by 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. OK, so it's going to land it right here. OK, so now if we get rid of this other stuff. Whoop, OK, we're getting our level out here. Now we'll just draw this. And you see it's a steeper, it's a much steeper parabola that the computer will draw for you. But that's what our shape is going to look like. Now in this next one over here, we're going to follow the same method. So we have a vertical stretch. It's a, again, a vertical stretch. But this one is by a factor of 3 halves. Okay, That's this factor right here. And if you see a factor in front which is less than 1, like 1 half or 1 third, that would be a compression. But this time we got two stretches. And what's the horizontal shift? That is going to be a horizontal shift uh, left again, because it's another addition. Left by 5. And our last shift here is going to be that guy. That is a vertical shift up 2. Sorry if that's hard to read. Um, OK, let's go through and start drawing it. I like to have a parent function to work off of, so it's important that you know these things. And we can use the points uh, 0 and 1 again. But instead of going up like a parabola, it's going to go out like a square root. Okay. And I think there would be another point over here if you're interested. So let's, uh, let's get started with this. I'm going to start with 0, 0. That's a nice one. And you see when you stretch 0, 0, nothing happens. And then we shift it left by 5. We're over here. And shift it up by 2. There we go. And now we move on to the next points. Uh, 1 comma 1. We stretch it by 3 halves. Uh-oh. We're in the middle between two grid lines, right? It's going to be 1 comma 3 halves because I multiplied uh, by this number, by this 3 halves. That's inconvenient because the computer will not let you put a mark at something that's not an integer, 
right? The computer won't let you use fractions. And that's for your own benefit, so you don't make mistakes that are a tiny bit off, but it is sometimes annoying. So what that means is I'm going to try to find a better uh, mark to use, and I'll try this over 4, up to 1 next. If you start out from 4, multiply by 3 half. sorry, start out from 2, multiply it by 3 halves, it puts you up to 3. Then we shift left by 5, and then we shift up by 2. Okay, so I'm going to be over here. And we can get rid of those little work sketches. And now, if you draw the parent function, or the computer will draw it for you, oh, that's a nice curve, you're going to see that this thing is actually a little steeper than the original parent function. See, here's the original parent function, something like that. Uh, it, it actually got a little taller because of that stretch factor of three halves that's making it taller vertically.